I always assumed that I would be fine as long as I kept, you know, taking care of my health. But to find out like it's kind of inevitable was very difficult to handle. We were on our way to an appointment at Children's actually one day and she was asking a lot of questions, a lot of questions, and then kind of drilling down, drilling down. You know, ultimately to the question that she was really getting at the whole time, which was, am I gonna die? Ellie Leo is a 16-year-old girl living with two parents and her older sister. She hangs out with friends, does sports, and has hobbies like art and music. But what you may see on the outside leaves out one crucial aspect of her life. Cystic fibrosis is an inherited chronic disease that affects 30,000 Americans. Cystic fibrosis, the disease that can make you feel like you're drowning on the inside. While you might expect this story to be about how Ellie defeated a disease, it is not. Because this story is about a disease that lasts forever and has no cure. It's in fact about a chronic lung disease by the name of cystic fibrosis. So what is it about this disease that led Ellie to the point of being so unmotivated that she didn't feel like doing her routine treatments? I have such a routine of doing my treatments. There have been times where I've lost that routine just because I don't feel motivated to do it. And how has she dealt with some of the hardest aspects of living with this chronic lung disease that only gets worse over time? Ever since I was little, I was passionate about fighting against cystic fibrosis. I participated in this annual fundraiser walk called Great Strides. Probably one of the main reasons why I was so motivated in this cause is because of a personal connection with Ellie. We're here at the place where I met Ellie. We came here a long time ago. I don't actually remember like when I met Ellie. Both of our families have pretty much been going here ever since me and Ellie were little. We basically grew up in this church. We've been in a lot of different things together like Sunday school and just being in the church, doing things like worship team. We also had this Bible study that met every other Friday night where the kids would hang out while the parents would study. This is someone that I would see more than twice a week. And when you see someone with your own eyes that you know has a chronic, incurable disease, it just strikes a different chord. But when lockdown happened, over time, our worlds became more distant and that personal element began to fade. A SARS-like virus, which has infected hundreds in China, has now reached the United States. In March of 2020, the coronavirus broke out and it would change everything. The Bible study, like so many other gatherings, had come to a halt as we all stayed isolated in our homes. I've come back to trying to advocate for cystic fibrosis because I don't want it to just be a phase of my life or like a trend. Cystic fibrosis, Ellie has to live with it forever. It's an uncurable disease and a problem that still has no solution. So what exactly is cystic fibrosis, and why is it so important to advocate for? In medieval Europe, there was a saying that went, Woe to the child who tastes salty from a kiss on the brow, for he is cursed and soon will die. People didn't really know what caused it, but they knew that a salty kiss meant impending death. But in August of 1938, Dr. Dorothy Anderson published the journal article Cystic Fibrosis of the Pancreas and its relation to celiac disease, becoming the first person to name and describe cystic fibrosis. In today's world, we know that cystic fibrosis is a chronic lung disease caused by a mutation in the CFTR gene. 
leading to thick and sticky mucus that clogs the airways in various organs, including the lungs. And one side effect is salty skin. It makes it difficult to breathe and is a progressive disease, breaking down the lungs over time. To this day, there is still no cure. But what is it truly like on a personal level for someone like Ellie to live with cystic fibrosis? And how does it influence different areas of her life? My name is Ellie Leo. I'm 16 years old. I really like art a lot, um, like art history. I went to Europe a few years ago, and we go to a lot of art museums in high school with like, more options for like classes and stuff. I do have an art history class. I like Van Gogh a lot, which is kind of basic, but um, another artist I really like is Paul Gauguin, and my favorite piece is by him called Where Do We Come From? And I love learning about like the stories behind artworks and stuff. Her art skills are like, I think they're really good. Did you see like the, the what did she draw? Like the boot? I was like, how did you draw that? It was crazy. She's like skilled at art, but she's also like a creative mind. Like she'll like think of things to like paint and like that I'm like, what does this mean? And she has like five whole metaphors. That was Abby, Ellie's older sister. Abby's also a friend of mine. She has been in my life for pretty much as long as I can remember, and she still goes to the same church as I do, where we've co-led the youth group worship team together for the past few years. My name is Abby. I'm a senior in high school right now. I plan on attending um, college to major in molecular biology and study research, hopefully getting my master's degree and then going on to pursue research as a career. I actually chose it because of my experiences with cystic fibrosis. Growing up, like I always knew a lot about it from like a symptomatic standpoint because obviously my sister, you know, like went to doctor's appointments and like I knew how to sterilize her neb cups and like do her medications and everything. Ellie having CF was kind of a catalyst for me to realize my passion lied in science. And I think that if I didn't have that experience with it beforehand, it would take me a lot longer to realize that I love science. She said that it's always been an inspiration because of CF. Like she just has like such like, like a motivation to kind of like contribute to these medical advancements that would like affect my own life. I saw people at work, like, you know, doing their jobs, like their everyday jobs, but like what they were doing actually has really important ramifications for like people like my sister. And I realized that I could also like do a career like that, something that I love, but that could also help a lot of people. She actually was able to like be part of a program where they talk to Congress members. I'm like a part of like an event in the summer called Teen Advocacy Day, where like I go down to Washington DC and I lead meetings with like Congress people from my state, talking about like my story and about Ellie's story, but also about like specific legislation that like affects the cystic fibrosis community. And I'm able to like give like a perspective of like, you know, like while lawmakers are making these big decisions, like how it affects people like my sister. Like in my life, as far as CF, but really just in general, my sister, probably my biggest supporter. She just advocated for CF like so much and she's always been very supportive. We were 18 months apart, um, but we've always been like basically like twins when we were little. We would like play together and like have the same friends and like go to school together and everything. And even now, like we're very close. Like, you know, we hang out and we like go to the store and like watch movies together and everything. We're very close and we talk a lot and she's definitely like a really important person in my life. In order to truly capture Ellie's full story, we have to go back to where it all started, back before Ellie was even born. This is John and Jenica, Abby and Ellie's parents. They met by going to college together where they had mutual friends and ended up working together. I talked with Jenica to uncover Ellie's story from even before Ellie was born. What was it like leading up to Abby being born? Well, I, I actually had a, a test done when I was pregnant. I think I was about 10 weeks pregnant. So it was very, very early. Like I wasn't showing or anything. Either this baby is um, not going to have CF, in which case I wanted just to be able to, you know, kind of just take all of the typical steps that a person would take when they're, you know, bringing, about to bring home their first baby. And then the other option, of course, is if the baby did have CF, I wanted to be prepared for that I, um, well ahead of having the baby. 
Since cystic fibrosis is a genetic disease, it is inherited through parents. Both parents need to be carriers of CF for a child to be born with it. And since John and Jenica are both carriers, there's a one in four chance of the baby having cystic fibrosis. My sister-in-law had really encouraged us to, whichever way, you know, it went, to not ever lose sight of the fact that, you know, we were bringing this, you know, we're, it was a baby. Babies are joyful, and this baby might come with some extra baggage, but, you know, just to kind of not lose sight of just the beauty of new life, I guess. I think it took not even two weeks um, to come back and say that she was a carrier. I remember just having this sense of just massive, you know, like kind of like letting a breath out, and you're like, oh. Without cystic fibrosis, Ellie's older sister, Abby, was born in February of 2004. But for Ellie, the story was different. We were actually in the Berkshires, John and Abby and I, so we'd kind of done like a little weekend away, and they called. I think in my mind, I kind of prepared myself, or I thought I had prepared myself, and maybe I had as, as far as I could have, but when it became very, you know, real, we ended up leaving. It just wasn't fun, you know. We didn't want to be there anymore. We just wanted to be at home. I had this, um, you know, I just, un, un, like, fatal, uncurable disease. Like, that phrase kept coming through my head, and I just couldn't, um, it just was, it was a lot, and it was very overwhelming. So the first thing I did, was go online and read a bunch of terrifying things. In September of 2005, Ellison Leo was born with cystic fibrosis. She was in and out of children's a lot. We were at the pediatrician like every two days. She was severely underweight. Everything was just a process with her. Probably the, maybe the hardest moment I think was she was five and she developed um, a, a, like a lung infection. Her lung function tanked and, um, and she it ended up with a bunch of new treatments. It just felt all of a sudden, you know, because we kind of been cruising along for five years, and then all of a sudden felt like this was just very, very real. Okay, I'll take a picture of Ellie. Hi. <laughs> Hi. Hi. When I was younger, like, as far as CF, it really wasn't like a Ready? big negative to my life. I was able to get like more opportunities than the average kid to go CF. In school, we learned about CF, and I liked to talk about it. We'd have a lot of fundraisers and like all our friends would come to them and I, I really enjoyed them. I think I was like, I remember in like fifth grade or early middle school when I did the Make-A-Wish Foundation, I wished to like go to the Olympics, which didn't get to happen because of COVID. Like that was a really big deal when I was younger and it was something I was super excited about. see many cons to having CF. From as long as I can remember, like it was just part of life. Like when I was like a kid, like I didn't really know that Ellie was different. Like I just thought that that was like normal because like I didn't know any better. Like once um, we kind of got a little bit older and stuff, like when we would have like friends over or something, Ellie would have to come inside and do her treatments. And like everyone else would be like playing outside. And I was like, that's weird. And then like, you know, as I kept getting older and I like started to understand what that actually meant. All through middle school, I woke up at like 4.30 a.m., did my treatments and then went to school. And then I'd come home and have to do them again. One of them is a nebulized treatment. You inhale the medicine through like the mouthpiece. And that takes around like a half hour. I have what I call a vest. You plug it into like this machine and it shakes to like sort of clear your lungs. And I do that after the nebulizer and that takes like around 40 minutes to a half hour. And I have to take around like 40 pills a day. I take up, I take a bunch before I eat just because of vitamins and things like that. And if I forget to take them, I get very sick. I'm around middle school, there are times where I get sicker. So I would have to like 
go to the nurse during school if my breathing is bad and do treatments in the nurse's office. Even though cystic fibrosis is a big part of her life, it is not her whole identity. Throughout her life, Ellie has done many different sports. When we were little, Ellie and I actually did gymnastics at the same gym, often at the same time. I started gymnastics in preschool, I think I was three, and I did it up until around two years ago in ninth, ninth grade, I did stop gymnastics. So I did it for a solid, what was that, like 11 years, I think. And so it was always a huge part of my life. I mean, it was very like beneficial for my lung function. I remember my mom saying that a lot when I was younger, like keeping active and stuff is very important to me because of CF because it, you know, improved my lung function and stuff. So gymnastics was a way for me to, you know, be a part of like a very like, um, meaningful sport to me and help my health. So, Arnold Gymnastics was like the gym I went to, and um, they were always very involved with CF and fundraising. They actually had a um, an athlete before me with cystic fibrosis, and she did unfortunately pass away. Um, but she was a big part of like the town and the gym. So everyone in the gym kind of had knowledge about CF and was very supportive of it. So I've always been like very thankful for the you know, the people involved in the sport for me because they've always just been like very like supportive of me. And they actually did a bunch of fundraisers for CF. Like a lot of like the funds they raised at meets and stuff and shows would go towards CF. Um, when I think I was like eight, when they asked me to like give a speech at one of like the shows. Hi, I'm Ellie Leo. I'm eight and a half years old. My birthday is September 3rd and I love cats. My favorite color is yellow and I'm in third grade. I take piano lessons and gymnastics. I also have a lung disease called cystic fibrosis. I take my gymnastics lessons every week. Gymnastics is not only fun, but it gives me exercise that I need. So now you work you work there, right? Yeah, I do. So what do you do and what is that like? Yeah, so at the gym, I, I'm still able to be involved even though I'm not like a, an athlete there anymore. Um, I coach gymnastics for kids, kind of a range of ages from like kindergarten to like middle school. So I teach like classes, um, and we, you know, I spot them for all their skills and yeah, and just being like a coach there, it's definitely like really cool for me to be able to like, like I had coaches that were around my age when I was their age and now like I'm the one that's sort of like carrying it on, I guess. Yeah. So I guess, yeah. I like that part of it the best, so. With cystic fibrosis, like, it's kind of scary because, like, there is a life expectancy associated with it. So Ellie was uh, 10, I think, when we had this conversation. Um, I haven't actually, I'm curious if her memory is the, is the same. I remember it very clearly. I might have been, like, eight or nine when I found out the life expectancy for someone with CF. Um, and I think that just, I mean, it was really shocking. I remember um, they had some sort of a purple day or something in the school district. Kids were writing cards, you're so brave. And and, um, and she'd heard before, you know, like courageous or something. And I remember her, her saying before, like, people are always saying like, I'm brave. And she's like, it's really not that big of a deal. I always assumed that I would be fine as long as I kept, you know, taking care of my health. Um, and me saying, well, you know, it, this, is a, this is a big deal, Ellie. Um, and her saying, well, it's not like, you know, it's not like I have anything bad, like cancer or something, which was, you know, kind of what her head was, um, you know, understanding and wrapping around at that point. We were on our way to an appointment at Children's actually one day. And she was asking, she's, you know, in the back seat because she was little and not big enough to be in the front seat and asking a lot of questions, a lot of questions and then kind of drilling down drilling down and you know ultimately to the to the you know her her the question that she was really getting at the whole time which was am I gonna die and am I gonna die from this and when am I gonna die from this there have been so many like leaps and bounds that have been made in recent years which is really great but it's still um pretty sad for me to think about that for Ellie, like someone who was born the same year that she was with cystic fibrosis, like a life expectancy for them would be 31 years old. I just remember pulling over and we just were in a, a gas station, like somewhere off of Route 9. <laughs> um, 
and you know, I sat in the back seat with her and we talked a little bit and she was crying and I cried. You know, as far as the mental, like emotional aspect, you know, it changed the way I saw CF obviously. Like it being such a big part of my life, you know, it did have a big impact on my mindset, I'd say. Like there are times where I didn't see the point of doing treatments or taking medicine if it was just like, if it wasn't gonna stop anything from getting worse. Like I'm, cause I knew I was gonna get sick no matter what eventually. So I guess like it kind of took away a lot of the motivation um, as far as like taking care of my health that I had when I was younger. Outside of CF, you know, I do have a lot of like challenges as far as mental health and just having like that kind of like hopeless feeling as far as CF, like, cause I know, you know, my future is jeopardized because of my health. You know, having that feeling can be very like, you know, hard to keep yourself motivated. Um, and it can definitely be a source of anxiety for me um, just cause, you know, I do have to be thinking about my breathing if I'm sick, you know, I have to, I have to think about it a lot. and. Um, it's hard to not kind of like obsess over that, I guess. In seventh grade, um, I did end up getting hospitalized. That was definitely scary for me because like, I just didn't like really understand. Like, just like there is just kind of like a big thing. She uh, coughed up some blood, which is not terribly uncommon, but it was the first time she coughed up a little bit before it had happened. Um, this time was uh, more significant and they put her on, I think she had like two rounds of oral antibiotics, um, you know, trying to keep her out of the hospital and then ended up having to, to bring her in for IV antibiotics. I know a lot of people who have CF are hospitalized a lot more often than Ellie has been, which is like really good that Ellie has been able to like be lucky in that aspect. But like, I remember I was like getting picked up from school and like I was like on the bus or something and like my mom called me and was like, oh, like when you get home, like we're not gonna be at home right now. We had to bring Ellie in and like, I'll call you in like an hour. And I was like, what? Like, what does that mean? And it was kind of scary and like going to visit her. You know, I had to miss a ton of school. And um, so yeah, I guess that was difficult for all these reasons. So babies born in 2005 have a life expectancy of 31 years. I, I don't believe that that's Ellie's story at all. And I, that's that's not just mom, you know, rosiness or, or can't face um, facts or anything like that. 31, it brings into account, you know, some of the, um, the 60 year olds and some of the five year olds. Babies born today are, I think 52 they just released. So, I mean, that's an incredible advantage. And I, I think in Ellie's lifetime, um, I think that there will be a cure. Our whole goal with her is just to, it's a progressive disease, is to keep the progression of the disease slow enough so that by the time the cure is available, she will still be able to live, you know, like a good life, not on oxygen, able to kind of move around. So right now it's kind of like, you know, it's like a car that is at a very, 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 very small incline and you just have a team of people just trying to, you know, keep the car from rolling down this slight incline. Um, so you're losing ground, but our whole goal is just to lose ground so slowly that um, when something comes that can kind of fix it, um, we're, in, we're still in a good position for it. Well, experts call it a game changer. FDA has approved a new breakthrough treatment for cystic fibrosis. Yeah, this is exciting. It is the first therapy able to treat 90% of patients with the rare life-threatening disease. We've seen some of these uh, modulator drugs come through. There have been three before that Ellie could not take because of her mutations. But this would finally be, you know, like this was her drug. And um, this is also, this is the best one. It was a very, very exciting time when that was that was approved and that was genuinely a, a game changer. She started Trikafta in November before COVID, which is now our new like set point for everything. She did get a cold. Ellie, for most of her life, you know, it might be, it would be like a four, sometimes six weeks, you know, process, sometimes um, ending up on antibiotics. If we get a cold, it's it stinks, it's a bummer and that's it. For Ellie, it's a, it's a bummer, but it's also a bummer with more potential, you know, like ending up on more drugs and just, you know, going on for a long time. And I remember being just kind of, you know, realizing, hey, you had a cold and now you don't. And that's in a very reasonable amount of time. 
So that's something that I would credit to Trikafta for sure. She was in two back-to-back -back studies looking at the effectiveness of it and, and if it is kind of good enough that it can actually replace some of her treatments. In her case and in, in most cases, um, they are dropping. So she used to do a little over two hours of treatments every day and now she does one hour. If you think about being 16, 17, 15, and now you just got an hour of your life back, like that's that's not, it feels like a luxury, but but that's actually not, you know, that's not insignificant. As Ellie arrived into the world of high school, new treatments weren't the only change in this new stage of life. She decided to try out a new type of sport, cross country and track. And while you may think that the influence of cystic fibrosis on her breathing would hinder her performance, Ellie exceeded all expectations. I started cross country and track my first year of high school when I was a freshman. Um, my friends were doing it, so I thought I'd give it a try. My freshman year, I was one of the top runners in the team, and like being that as someone with CF was very significant to me. My coaches and my teammates, you know, all knew about CF, um, and and they were always like incredibly supportive of that. They like, definitely kept me very motivated throughout that, and you know. The sport is very, like, everyone like, encourages each other a lot. So just having that kind of support was very, like, impactful. One of Ellie's teammates, Sienna, is a longtime close friend of Ellie. And to really show the kind of impact that Ellie has had on people in her life, I asked Sienna about what kind of influence Ellie has had in her life. She described to me how Ellie has taught her how to live gratefully in the moment, to notice the little things and appreciate both the good and the ugly times. She wrote, having a friend that is always noticing these moments, cherishing them as if they were gold, really makes you think more. It makes you live in the present and appreciate its wholeness. That is how Ellie has influenced me. She has made me more grateful, observant, loving, and appreciative. If you were to describe Ellie in three words, what would they be? Okay. Hmm. I have so many words. Um, I would say loyal. She's infinitely loyal, thoughtful, and I think I would say like twinkly, which isn't really a word, but it's kind of like, there's a little like edge to her that it's like funny. Funny, I think she's a hilarious sense of humor and she's always laughing and like, even like the things that she says, like, and she doesn't mean to be funny, but she's really funny. So I definitely think she's funny. I say she's very creative. And then I would say extremely, extremely hardworking and like, People use hardworking to like describe school. They're like, I study a lot. And like, that's definitely an aspect of hardworking. And I think I see that in her, but I see it in her just like in every area of her life. Like even like her hobbies, like she likes art right now. So like when she's like drawing or like painting or something, she won't do it and then like give up halfway through. Even if it's like 11 at night, she's like, I want to finish this. Like she's very hardworking with like all aspects of her life. And I admire that. And people are characterized by, you know, the things that they go through and you know, how it changes them. CF has contributed to my character a lot. I think it's made me more like adaptive, like even when, like, when I was a young kid, I didn't enjoy going to the hospital and doing all these tests and blood work. I kind of found a way to like, just keep myself motivated through that. There are other issues in my life besides CF, but like I've been dealing with CF since I was a young kid. So I've kind of learned how to take the challenge and kind of work through it. So I think like I'm able to kind of apply the mindset to other aspects of my life. Throughout her life, Ellie has had mental toughness to push through the challenges that have faced her. She has shown us that the difficulties in life don't need to define who we are and what our lives are about. While we can't just ignore our problems and act like they don't exist, there is so much more to each person than the things they can't control. Ellie is so much more than just a girl with a disease. She's an artist, an athlete, a sister, a daughter, a friend, and an inspiration. She is her own individual person, with drive, with determination, and through her struggles, she always finds a way to impact those around her. 
While cystic fibrosis tries to limit her, Ellie's identity goes beyond. There's more to Ellie than just having CF. Ellison, Kate, Leo. It is my pleasure to present the Norton High School graduated class of 2023.